I, I can confirm that there are people out there and possibly even up on the stage right now who are genuinely depressed about Breaking Bad ending in a couple of months. There will be no more of it left. I, I <laughs> imagine that you could probably have kept it going for a couple more seasons if, if given the opportunity. I mean, why, why now? Uh, really, uh, creatively, uh, I am one of the people who's, who, who is depressed that this, uh, that this show is over uh, because of these wonderful people here who, uh, you know, we, we, we don't see each other that often these days uh, except at events like this, which, and these events are wonderful. <laughs> so for, for personal reasons, uh, I am, I am uh, very sorry it's over, but creatively, everything has its, every story has its beginning, middle, and end, and, and in particular, I mean, historically, television shows are designed to be indefinite in their <clears throat> storytelling capacity. They're designed to go on forever, most of them. This one, by its, from its very uh, conception, was not. It was not designed to, to go on forever. It, it, it needed to end. And so creatively, I haven't, despite wonderful uh, feelings of, of, uh, of, of, of love and, and respect for the show that, that uh, we are very blessed to get, I, I don't feel like uh, creatively that we're ending it too soon. I mean, you've had some time now to, to not be Walter White anymore. I, I mean, do you find... Oh, but why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you miss the guy? Oh, Does he God. creep back into your day-to-day -day life in any way? He's the, the greatest character of my career. I don't anticipate being able to play someone so rich and deep and varied. The, the spectrum of emotions that Walter White can justifiably play are uncanny. It's just, it's a playground for an actor. And um, I, I'm, I, I'm so grateful for it. But I agree with Vince. I think we came to a natural ending, and it's time to let, he'll, there'll, there'll always be a Walter White and a Heisenberg inside me. <laughs> and uh, whenever I need them, bring them out. <laughs> wow. Who would you like to see tonight? <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's, you know, it's funny because it, it, I don't want it to sound flippant, but, but as actors, we're sort of used to having sort of shallow roots, that we make intimate relationships, and then we know it's coming to an end. And we pull out the tree, and we find another place to plant it, and we plant the tree, and it grows roots, and we, we meet other friends and people that we love to work with, and, and it, um, it, it's kind of been that way. And so while we have all pulled up the roots, um, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think we'll ever be we'll inexorably tied to each other because of Breaking Bad. And that's, that's a lovely thing to have. I think, I think diehard Breaking Bad fans already know this, but the, the character of Jesse Pinkman was not planned necessarily to be a long-term presence on the show. First of all, what the heck kind of a show would Breaking Bad have been without Jesse? Yeah, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> A damn fine program. <laughs> Here you go again. <laughs> oh, man. I, I can't imagine it without it. You want to tell the story about when I took you aside? Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was uh, hired to play Jesse Pinkman on Breaking Bad, I had no idea the initial plan that. Uh, he was going to meet his demise towards the end of the first season. Um, I mean, that was really your pitch to, to networks, right? Yeah. Like, the arc of the first season, yeah. my character would bring Walter White into the drug world, and then um, he would die in some horrific death, and, uh, <laughs> and then yeah. it would lead uh, Walter White going after, you know, revenge yeah. to kind of avenge my death. Um, <laughs> but they uh, decided to... Kind of go a different route. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Don't, and that's don't. all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say things like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, uh, you, did you hear Justin Timberlake really loves the show? I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> he comes on the show, kills Jesse, yeah. and then takes over, and then we spar and, and air like, no, in all, in all uh, seriousness, yeah, well. Brian would mess with me throughout the entire series. Um, and I remember in the middle, halfway through the second season, Brian came up to me 
with just such a serious look on his face, <laughs> said, he gave me this big hug. And I'm like, hey, buddy. He goes, man, but it's great, huh? Did you read the, the next episode? And I said, no. And then he looks at me and goes, he gives me another hug. He's like, just, just read it. It's, it's fine. Just, just read it. And he just walks off. And I'm thinking to myself, holy shit. Jesse's dying. And so I instantly go get the next episode. And he was just lying. Thank you for that. Yeah, look at him. Like constantly. Yeah. There's an, another uh, iconic scene that, that you and Brian created together. It's perhaps the one that will be quoted for time immemorial is just the, you know, I am the one who knocks yeah. scene. I'm sure you'll be asked about this in every public setting you go to this week, but could you guys talk a little bit about the creation of that, of that scene? The, the seeds that you planted between Skylar and Walt as a couple that actually led, it leads directly, I think, to that scene. The, the nature of their relationship in the pilot, she's, she's trying to control things because that's what she knows to do as a human being. She tries to control inner chaos. She tries to control things because it gives her a sense of order and it makes her feel better as a human being. That's how she orders her life. It makes, she's not an emotional person, she's a tightly held person. And he's finally saying, you don't control me. I'm not controlled by anybody, especially you. You don't understand who you're dealing with. And I think that there, it's, I can follow that line directly from the pilot all the way to that scene. And I saw that like a flash the other night. Nice. And it was really, really interesting to see that. The, the other fun thing, for me, in that scene, uh, the way you guys uh, played it, the way it was written and directed, is that at the moment where you give what is arguably, and you never know this stuff uh, in advance, you only kind of come upon it in hindsight, but in that moment you give one of those archetypal lines of the series, I am the danger, I am the one who knocks, you're, character-wise, you're, you're at your, one of your lowest ebbs power-wise, because uh, uh, Gus, Gustavo Fring has just got you over a barrel at that point, which is, which is what, what I, I love about uh, the way that scene was, was constructed. Yeah. Yeah, and then it, the way you, but the way you play it, you're like, yeah, I believe this guy, he's a badass. <laughs> but, but in the context of the moment... It had to come out of that sense of insecurity yeah. that he had at that yeah, moment, yeah. Yeah, to try to get something back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it back from your wife, if not from the guy yeah. who uh, threatens uh, your life, who holds it in his hand. Yeah. I mean, is there a case to be made, especially as the show is sort of en entering its home stretch? I mean, it's it's a story almost as much about Hank as it is Walt, or it is a story about uh, a man's redemption as much as it was about a man's corruption. Yeah. I mean, I think I saw the the the, the kind of the parallel or the opposite track. Uh, kind of started to develop between Walter White and Hank. And uh, you know, it's odd, he, I've said this before, but he, he's, he's, he's the only guy on the show who, who you know, is not corrupted. And, and it, was, it was an odd, odd position to be in in a show called Breaking Bad when he's the only guy who, who, who didn't break bad, you know? And I hearken back to when I unfortunately had to beat up this young man yeah. here. <laughs> he broke bad, he beat me up. I did, but then I felt sorry about it. And, no. I, and, I, and I did, he did, <laughs> and he felt bad about it, and he didn't lie about it, and he could have lied about it, because everybody wanted him to lie about it, to get away with it, even his wife, this one here. <laughs> Klepto Kathy here. <laughs> everybody has problems. I know. And they deal with them in different ways. But it was it's so, not it, about judging. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a great, yeah, it was Tom, Tom Schnaz's episode that he wrote this great, Great, great speech with Hank just saying, you know, I, I, I can't do it. And, and I'll, I'll go in and, and, uh, and I'll accept the consequences for, 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 the, for my actions, you know. And it was, it was a, I love it was a great, I love, I love, it was a great, yeah, it was really, because I wouldn't, it, it really was written so he couldn't cry, but every time I read the lines that I'm, I'm just a man, I, 
you know, uh, um, I, I don't think I'm uh, cut out to be a, an officer anymore. And it just, I, I almost couldn't do it without tearing up, even on the time. <laughs> you know oh. what I'm because the lines were so powerful. By the time you got there, he said the universe is trying to, there was a long speech, and he finally said the universe is trying to tell me something. I'm just, I'm not the man I thought I was, you know. That's a really hard thing to say for any, anybody, yeah. and let alone Hank, you know. And um, I thought that was the, his, his, his core, and that kind of stayed through for the next couple, couple seasons, you know. So. As Marie, who, you know, I mean, she is one of the more troubled characters, and yet she's also... What do you mean like, when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> But also, she's made, made herself very endearing. I mean, what is it like to be that, that person for a little while, temporarily? I, well, you know, even when she's, because she can be a huge pain in the ass, and I, but I just loved her from the beginning. And I loved that you loved her, Vince, because you always did, and you'd always stick up for her, and, and I just loved her. And, but I love that, I love her flaws, and it's so, fun to play. And right now, um, on, my, on my new show, I, I play a character much more like me than anyone I've ever played. And Marie was so different in front. I'm not saying there's not any of, of me in there, but it was so fun to do that. I mean, this like purple loving freak <laughs> who, who would also at times be the only voice of reason yeah. among these really smart people who were just doing these crazy fucking things. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, and I, I loved her for that. And I loved that she would surprise me. You know, the huge scene for me, and I've, I've talked about this before, was the intervention scene when we shot that in season one. Yeah. was like such a watershed moment, you know, just for me in, in the show to really see who all these people were and how they were to each other and, and be surprised by my character and all of them and really see, you know, I just, I, I saw, I saw this, I saw the show just being amazing and going on for like five, five long seasons. I think why audience is connected to, to Breaking Bad, I mean, it premiered, you know, in the midst of a really harsh, uh, you know, economic downturn and it, it, you know, people not only found it plausible that somebody could be in as dire circumstances as, as Walt is, but they, they, connected to it, they wanted to root for him in, in a weird way. I, I, I honest again, I was not thinking that much in terms of uh, the terrible times we went through starting, what was it, 2008 when it all kind of went to shit, yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was not really uh, thinking, and, and there was nothing political I had in mind. I just, I just wanted to tell a story about this one, <clears throat> to me, very interesting man. Uh, and uh, I, what I was worried about in the early days was, was that people would not engage with him that we wouldn't be able to set the hook, as it were, because he wouldn't be likable enough. Because, you know, I knew going into it, this guy's going to be cooking crystal meth. What, what the hell is worse than that? I mean, it destroys whole communities. There's really not anything good to be said about uh, crystal meth. And uh, so one of the reasons I wanted to work with Brian again, uh, you know, starting with, you know, the character who's the guy doing all this bad stuff is, that I knew he had the acting chops, but I also, I also knew he had this basic underlying humanity that just comes through, it kind of beams out of his eyes or his, his, his expression. I don't know where it comes from, but you root for this guy. Yeah. And, and I learned that on that X-File episode where he played a real villain who nonetheless you felt sorry for at the end of it all. So that first season, I really front loaded it. Uh, you know, get Brian playing the part, you know, array a lot of uh, economic uh, hardships against him, do everything I could from a writer's perspective, from a mechanical storytelling perspective, to make us want to root for this guy. And then as he got worse and worse, uh, the character got darker and darker and then made more and more questionable choices. I thought, well, hopefully the hook is set now. People keep watching, even though they won't like him as much, even though they won't sympathize as much. And lo and behold, you know, up to the number of episodes you guys have seen, you know, uh, 56, 50, 54 episodes in, uh, people are still rooting for this guy. And I'm like, really? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> hey, have, you know, God bless you. You know, not me so much, but, uh, you know, but if, if that's, if you're still digging him. Uh, I mean, I want you to be interested in him, uh, but I, I, I would not have guessed the character, nothing to do with Brian, but, but everything to do with the choices the character's made. I would have guessed at this point that he would lack sympathizability 
uh, but not, not so for a great number of viewers.